There'll never be another Tupac. As Tupac in one fell swoop and warm rhetorical gesture could both acknowledge the centrality of his mother's beauty while also, also saying that she was flawed. And even as a crack fiend, mama, you always was a black queen, mama. And who'd have think in the elementary, hey, I'd see the penitentiary one day. So, so Tupac was able, and something about that voice that registered beautifully, that, that intimately spoke to you, 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 like Marvin Gaye of hip hop, you could feel the pathos, the, the channeling of that desire. You could feel his hurt and anguish. It wasn't about making money. Even though he was rich, you knew he was doing it for the love of the game and the art and to tell the truth and to register his beliefs in America. He wanted to leave his imprint. He wanted to leave uh, some kind of recognition of those niggas who would never Never be acknowledged by anybody. And he said, if nobody cares, Tupac cares. Yes. So the beauty of Tupac is that he represents the expression, the ultimate symbol of black masculinity and black culture in general, arguing against the odds. Yes, he was self-destructive. Yes, he shredded the line between representation and reality. Yes, he could have grown up. He was only 25 when he died. What were you doing at 25? <laughs> He had written over 400 songs, made six films. When he died at 25 years old, the man was working out his soul's salvation in full public view. And as I end, what I love about Tupac, he had an obsession with God. Might have been your kind of God. But as we see in the last week's events, right, your kind of God versus my kind of God, that, that may be part of the problem. And Tupac saw that people be worshiping their narrow notions of who God is. God is too big for your theological categories. Yeah. Tupac said, I'm searching for black Jesus. He said, somebody that hurt like we hurt. Drink like we drink. Smoke like we smoke. A saint we can pray to in the ghetto. Now, you might say, what kind of God is that? Smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking some drinks. <laughs> what? It was what he's trying to say. We looking for somebody who been through what we've been through. Yeah. Last time I checked, Christians be saying they got a God who became a human being yeah. and therefore struggled with human beings and endured the sin of the world, took it on, absolved them of human responsibility by dying for these sins because he became like them. That's all Tupac said. I'm looking for a black Jesus that understands the internal dynamics of my suffering. That's why he said, somebody help me. Tell me where to go from here. Because even thugs cry. Amen. But do the Lord care? And so he raised the question of God's care for the world. And he answered it even in the midst of his questioning by saying, asking if heaven's got a G, proclaiming heaven does have a heaven for a G. Heaven does have space for a G, a ghetto, a thug. Is there a heaven for a G? Is there a heaven for a thug? He was constantly questioning about that, God forgive me. He was like the psalmist. If you read the Psalms, on the one hand, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, O Lord. Then at the same time, hey, by the way, kill my enemies too. Break them off too. Kill their mamas. Destroy their house. And David, by the way, he was like, you know, I'm gonna go send the husband of this woman I'm trying to mack to the front wall so I can have his woman. Don't tell me about no gangster rap. That's all in the song. <laughs> if I had more time, I'd break all that down. That's all right. But as I end, Tupac is a ghetto saint. Some people don't think he's dead. He's the first character to integrate immortality from our community. That exclusive pantheon of figures like JFK and, and Elvis who are deemed by their fans and followers to still be alive. <laughs> I was down in Jamaica. They said, the man lives, you know. My man is right down the island. I said, don't take me to him. <laughs> Love that brother, but I'm trying to write a book. <laughs> So 
some young people can't believe Tupac is dead because they've so identified with his body, beautiful, young, handsome, expressive, articulate, that for him to die is for us to die. Our identification means that we are vulnerable too. So we forestall that possibility by believing in his immortality, or at least his joke on the Grand Blog, his big joke on America, That's imitating right. Machiavelli, who said that you ought to fake your own death in order to hold on to power. Others believe that he is alive in their hearts because his spirit continues to exist in a beautiful way. And see, Tupac now is an urban legend. And to celebrate Tupac is to judge and critique the society that made thug life necessary. In other words, when we celebrate him, we're saying to America, we don't listen to you telling us not to like him. We like him to judge you. And he's a saint because some people invest in him a kind of almost deification, a, 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 an elevation to a status of saint, chanting his name, using his lyrics as rosary beads to grasp hold of, articulating his poetic vision of pain as a sermon to our soul. And so Tupac, for me, represents all that's beautiful and contradictory and ugly and self-destructive and edifying and hopeless and hopeful, which is why he's the most complete symbol of a generation still evolving. Thank you very much.